Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. And today, well, today is a very special episode. It's unlike anything I've ever done before because I am going to compare the sound of LPs, of vinyl records, against the sound of streaming files from Cobuzz and Tidal. Now, this, this, this actually was hatched by my buddy Dave. He says, hey, Steve, why don't you do this? Everybody wants to know. I said, really, everybody? Well, some people want to know. Compare vinyl to streaming. Before there even was streaming, when digital just meant CDs, I think a lot of people who went from LP to CD, it wasn't even about the sound. It was just about, it's so much easier to play a CD than to play a record. You just put it in hit play and then you just go. All the other fussiness of LPs and vinyl is, is gone. And I think even for people who really liked playing records, most of them made the switch to CD because it was just easier. So convenience trumps quality most of the time. So sure, playing a file is a, so much easier than playing an LP. Less fussy, less hands-on. You could just sit there, go like that, and you got your music playing. It's all good. And if that's your priority, then you should continue to stream and don't look back, don't care about what vinyl sounds like. Uh, but the thing about doing these comparisons, comparing LPs to files of the same album, well, <laughs> first question is, are they the same? Hmm, that's practically impossible to find it. Are they basically the same master? And even if they were a brand new recording that was coming out on vinyl and streaming, they're, they're almost never the same master because the LP master may be wildly different than the CD or streaming master or Amazon or whatever. They might all be different from the get-go. But when we're talking about records that are 10 years old or 20 or 50 years old, the waters get pretty murky pretty quickly. So we don't know whose file, what file, when file. It's a big jumble of ideas. I, I don't know. So what I did when I started to do comparisons, I was looking for LPs and, and streaming that sounded sort of in the ballpark, right? Like one that wasn't, was very obvious, was the stream for Herbie Mann at the Village Gate. I love that recording <clears throat> on LP. It sounds amazing. The streams on Cobas and Tidal didn't sound anything like the LP. Just completely different mix. Everything about it was different, so there was no need to proceed. So all the albums that I'm going to talk about that I compared LP to streams were as, like I said, in the ballpark. They, they, they bear resemblance to each other. But again, I have no way of knowing which, which file, which master was used to create the files or cut the LP in the first place, right? It, these factors are unknown to me and virtually unknowable. <laughs> Speaking of known knowns and unknown knowns, uh, these are, unless you're in the business or something, you can really track them down, make a lot of telephone calls. There's no way to know. For, for uh, files that were created from analog tape masters, there's no way to know which analog to digital converter, not D-Day, but A to D, analog to digital converter was used to create the uh, file in the first place, right? Anyway, lots of unknowns. Now I will tell you what is known. The, the turntable I use for these comparisons is an SME 15 with an SME 5 tone arm, an Ortofon Cadenza blue moving coil cartridge, and the phono preamp is a Vandenhall Grail. That's the phono front end of the system that I used. Pretty high end, not exorbitantly high end, but pretty serious piece of gear, Ge pieces of gear. And for the digital side of this equation, I used a MyTech Brooklyn DAC Plus, mostly because that DAC has MQA, and I was going to use some MQA files on title, so I wanted it to have that feature, so to speak, right? So that's how I picked the DAC, and that DAC was hooked up directly to my Mac mini computer. So the first rule for this test was that I needed files uh, that were similar enough to my LPs, and I, and I tried one that kind of surprised me how similar they were. This is the McCartney's first solo album, aptly named McCartney, and uh, this record I bought when it was brand new. It's in amazingly good condition. I always took good care of my records. And I compared it to a high-res file on Cobuzz 9624. 
Now, of course, <laughs> the Cobuzz was quieter than the 50-year-old record. Wow, what a shock, right? But the Cobuzz file sounded, well, more digital, thinner, grainier, more compressed than the record. Um, not, not gigantically so, but noticeably so. Paul's voice, the acoustic guitars, just sounded more like themselves on the vinyl record. Um, I went back and forth a lot because this is one of the, the first ones I did. And uh, on one hand, I was surprised how close they were because they're separated by a half century. But on the other hand, analog sounds like analog and digital sounds like digital. So that's where this sort of begins. Next up is this one. So the Allman Brothers. Now this is the obviously the Mobile Fidelity LP. Uh, really quiet LP, great sounding LP. And again, and, and this one is actually 192.24 high res. And again, the Koba sounded harder, leaner, less juicy, less analog. So, so far at least, uh, things are looking as you would expect that vinyl sounds like vinyl, Digital sounds like digital. Now, if you know Harry Pearson, the editor and creator of The Absolute Sound, he said decades ago, many decades ago, he said the best way to enjoy digital is never listen to analog. And I think those words <laughs> still carry a lot of weight. Digital is fine. I have thousands of CDs and I listen to streaming all the time. It's not that digital sounds bad. It's just that it sounds, it sounds less musical, to use the old-fashioned word, than a record played on a good turntable, cartridge, blah, 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 all that stuff. Yeah, the, the, the gap between analog and digital is still there. Now, in terms of which one is more accurate, well, it's easy to say that digital is more accurate, but, but because it has flatter frequency response, it has better stereo separation, it's quieter, blah, 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 blah. In the numbers game, Absolutely, digital is probably more accurate. But here's the thing. This record and the Paul McCartney record, they were recorded on analog tape. So the, to me, part of the goal of making a good transfer from analog tape to vinyl is to preserve that sound of <laughs> the analog tape. It's not digital. It's just, it wasn't born digital. It was born analog. So hearing the analog version seems to make, to my brain and to many people out there who love vinyl, seems to make more sense. So what about digital? What about more contemporary recordings that were born digital? Do they sound better in Cobas or Tidal than playing the LP? Well, to find out, I tried this one. This is Gudrun Gutt. This is electronic music. She's German. Uh, great recording, fun. Put a record on. I bought it first for the title. Well, I can tell you that this record sounds, the bass, there's a lot of bass on this recording. The bass is faster and tighter, much better defined in the streaming version on Cobas. The LP sounds fatter and looser and not as, not as right to me. I mean, this music should have more punch, it should have punch, right? And the streaming version wins on that regard. It still sounds overall leaner and more mm, constricted than the vinyl record, but I have a feeling that the Koba's stream sounds more like what uh, Gudrun got was look you know was going for when she made this record in the first place. So uh, score one for the streaming side. Next one up is this Eno. Uh, this is kind of an ambient slash dance. There's a lot of throbbing beats on this recording, but a lot of it is really quiet. And this LP's uh, surface noise is an issue. So obviously the streaming version, again, Cobas. I'll get to some titles soon enough. But the, uh, the Cobas obviously swamp this one in terms of quietness. This is noisier. But this one is more 3D. I mean, Eno is into making recordings that use space and depth. And the vinyl version definitely killed the Cobas version. It just had, and also dynamically, this one had, the vinyl had more kick to it and the 
Koba sounded a bit, a bit constrained by comparison. This one, this Julie Cruz record, uh, this is sort of a soundtrack in a way to David Lynch's Twin Peaks TV series. And the music by Julie Cruz and Bala Lamenti is mesmerizing. It's gorgeous. It's just an incredible recording. This one I listened to on Koba's and Tidal. And I have to say the LP was definitely clearer than the streaming files on Koba's and Tidal. It just, and it was, again, more 3D, uh, more low-end weight to it than the streaming versions. Uh, of course, the streaming versions were both uh, quieter than the LP. The, the Tidal version that is MQA encoded, but only 16-bit 44.1, uh, sounded juicier. It sound, well, you know, I've been listening to this record for decades. The title version sounded closer to what I like about the LP. In that sense, uh, it sounded more accurate. The, the title version sounded more accurate, that it faithful to the sound of the LP. Again, I'm pretty sure this was analog to, to begin with. So the analogness of the music was, was just better on the LP. And title, and Kobuz was in last place. You know, at this point, I want to just stop and say, now, of course, if I change the cartridge, right, my turntable would sound different. If I change turntables, these records would sound different. If I change the phono preamp, these records would sound different. And yeah, listen to title and Kobuz, they, they sound different. The CD sounds different. Everything sounds different. And unless you have uh, an album that you want to hunt down every possible version, every LP pressing, uh, every streaming version, every CD version to find out which one you think sounds the best, short of that kind of obsessive chase, you sort of you take what you got. You take the music as it is. And unless there's something about the sound of this recording, of a recording that you really love, you know, stop and smell the roses. Just enjoy the music as it is. To finish up, I pulled out this record. This is Ike Quebec. This is a fairly recent Blue Note remaster. And uh, this record compared to title, the title version is fuller sounding, more analog like, if you will. And this record, this vinyl record sounds uh, more digital a little more constricted, a little harder edge. The title version, by the way, is kind of dull. It's um, transients are blunted. This one has more life to the transients, the drums, the horns. But I still prefer this because at the end of the day, analog is about, uh, let's say, additive colorations. The, colorations of playing a vinyl record, of having a stylus sitting in a groove, spinning a 33 and a third, and whatever additive distortions of that physical medium of a diamond in a vinyl groove uh, are in some ways unrelated to the actual sound of the music that went down into the studio. Uh, well, that may be too strong a word, but in terms of the digital versions, which are pretty, let's say, neutral in terms of overt colorations like that, I'd say the digital colorations are, are subtractive. They're losing information. The vinyl, the analog versions, even on tape, are additive in terms of their distortion and their noise, etc. Neither one is perfect, though digital was originally called perfect sound forever. <clears throat> Neither is perfect, analog or digital. You have to pick well, I don't know about your poison, but you have to pick your, 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 pick your sound. You either go analog or you go digital, or some people do both, right? That's the, probably the easiest solution, if not the cheapest. So you got to figure it out on your own. But in terms of the experiment of today, comparing vinyl to streaming. As I said earlier, I, I like listening to streaming. I, I mean, when I'm sitting in my chair and listening for pleasure as opposed to doing reviews, given my druthers, as they used to say, I would rather play a vinyl record. I just like the sound of vinyl. I am, I'm a subjectivist tr through and through, and I like the sound of vinyl records. 
But when I listened to the stream, I wasn't cringing. I wasn't sticking my fingers in my ear saying how awful it sounded. It sounded good. In some ways, as I just described in this video, better, better than the LP. So there's no clear winner here. You, we, each of us have to decide where we stand on the analog digital uh, spectrum, right? Are you mostly analog or are you mostly digital or you can enjoy both for what they are? Tell me all about it in the comments below. So there you have it. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show with 155,000 subscribers. If, if you're one of those guys out there and ladies who were part of the 155, thank you so much for being there and subscribing. If you have yet to subscribe, come on in. We got plenty of room. We're on our way to 200,000. We'll be there eventually sometime in 2021. Uh, but beyond that, you should also check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash audiophiliac. I will link to that below. And speaking of linking below, I have three, count them, one, two, three, free samplers of audiophile music for you guys, for the audiophiliac audience. One is from Chesky Records, two are from MA Recording. I made videos about those free samplers and I will link to those videos below. And in those videos are links to their websites where you can get the free downloads. And by the way, they are large files because <laughs> they're not compressed. Uh, the, the, the music is not compressed dynamically. Uh, it is not EQ'd. It's not processed. It's, they are pure audiophile recordings made to sound as much like what went down at the session as humanly possible. Beyond that, I do have playlists for music reviews and for headphone reviews and electronics reviews and speaker reviews right here on this channel. Links, well, not links below, but you'll find them. They're here, trust me. And then I have interviews, interviews with just plain folk audiophile and with legends of the audio business like Eric Alexander from Tecton and Andrew Jones from ELAC and formerly of Pioneer, um, John Atkinson from Stereophile, many, many interviews. And I hope you enjoy that. Of course, Nelson Pass. Oh, got like seven or eight interviews with Nelson Pass. Anyway, good stuff there. So don't go away so fast. So to finish up, I can now say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. And I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.